as a fly. Mate, can you leave? No. Just go out the door? Oh, thank you. <laughs> Fucking amazing. Alright. <laughs> Hello, welcome to my channel, Commas and Ampersands, my name is Sarah, and today I'm going to tell you a little bit about my Kobo. I purchased my Kobo Clara in March 2019, specifically because I wanted to be able to read more ebooks from my library on an e-reader. At the time, I had to take my work laptop home quite frequently to do a lot of overtime, and there was just no room in my bag and it was too heavy anyway for a physical book. To be in there and I also had tried reading on my mobile screen but the backlight from my phone was just causing havoc with my eyes and giving me a lot of headaches so I wanted to go back to using an e-reader and I had a Kindle Paperwhite but the issue was that Kindle slash Amazon doesn't work with Australian libraries you can't just download something directly from your library onto your Kindle or however it works in America at one point it looked like we were going to get that capability, but instead Australia went down the route of a partnership with Kobo slash Rakuten. Basically if you have a Kobo you are golden, you can download books onto your device, and if you have one of the newer devices you can actually browse your library on the device, which is fantastic. I also specifically wanted to be using library books rather than purchasing new books on my Kindle because I had a very big TBR back then, and there were some quite massive books that I just couldn't justify carrying around in my bag, like they were too heavy and I felt like I was going to ruin them. But I was still a little bit hesitant about the upfront cost because I didn't end up using my Kindle that much when I purchased it and I wasn't sure if the Kobo was going to be exactly what I wanted. So I went into it thinking, you know what, it's $179 upfront and I just need to keep in mind like cost per use. The more I use this device, the more it is going to justify my having purchased it. So I've looked back on the books that I have read over the past year and I just wanted to see what that cost per use was. Over the past year I have read 45 books on my Kobo. Now two of them were books that I actually purchased. One was Ninth House by Lee Bardugo, which I purchased for a book club read, and the other one was the Shadow Magic Trilogy by John Lenahan, which I purchased because I only owned the trilogy in an omnibus edition, and I didn't want to carry around a fat book. I don't regret purchasing Ninth House because I enjoyed it well enough, but Shadow Magic I do regret purchasing because it was not great and I didn't end up reading the second or third book in the trilogy just because the first book was not my jam and I really had to force myself to finish that. It reverts to shadow magic every time it starts hibernating because that's one of my actual purchases on there which is great. It's just a constant reminder that I regret making that purchase. But if we take out those two books then I have read 43 books on my Kobo and with an original cost of 179 that brings cost per use down to $4.16. And that's actually a conservative estimate because I didn't keep proper track of all of the books that I DNF'd last year. I only kept track of the ones that I've read from start to finish. And that means that there are some that I have probably just completely forgotten about because they were so underwhelming that A, I DNF'd them, and B, I have no record of them anywhere. I am keeping better track of my reading in 2020 so that I can continue to assess this cost per use, but overall I'm pretty pleased with my investment. I actually wish that I had purchased a Kobo earlier because I feel like I just read faster on it, like I don't have to hold the book up, my hands don't get tired, this actually weighs less than my mobile phone. So it's incredibly easy to read and it's also incredibly easy to hold up where I should be reading rather than me screwing up my neck by reading like this. Which is why I had to start seeing a chiropractor. Never let anybody tell you that reading books is not a dangerous hobby. This record keeping and assessment is for me personally because I am interested in it and I always go into an expensive purchase with the thought of like cost per use, cost per use in my head. And with my Kobo it turned out to be a great amount of use and I am very happy with it. But I also wanted to share it because when I went into purchasing the Kobo there were very divided camps. Like if people love their Kindle they love their Kindle, if people love their Kobo they love their Kobo. And a lot of that came down to the differences between prices in the Kobo store and whether you're purchasing on Amazon. I couldn't find a lot of resources or a lot of reviews from people who were specifically borrowing library books, especially people who are specifically borrowing library books here in Australia. So if that's the kind of information that you're looking for and you're wondering whether or not it's going to be worth it, I can say that it has been for me. I am a pretty voracious reader, I guess, compared to other people, but 
From what I have seen and from what I have heard, these devices tend to last for quite a while and the only reason people tend to upgrade is that they either damage theirs accidentally or they just want one of the newer models because it's lighter or it has some kind of capability that their older one doesn't. And that's the same for my Kindle Paperwhite, like it still works perfectly after six years, it just doesn't serve the purpose that I need it to. And with that in mind, I can't see why if I continue to treat my Kobo well and I don't accidentally sit on it or throw it somewhere, I don't see why I wouldn't be able to use it for years to come and continue getting that cost per use down until it's basically negligible and I break even on the amount of books that I have used. So if you are somebody who is wondering whether or not a Cobra will be great for you, I hope this has answered some of your questions. If you have more questions about using it specifically for library books, then please let me know. If you have other questions about it, I'll try and answer. I have purchased a few books on here, but that's not really my primary use for it, so I will try and answer any questions that you have. But if you have none, then that's it. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you have enjoyed this video, and I will see you next time. Bye!